The first flight taking asylum seekers from the UK to Rwanda under a new government scheme is due to take off later today. About seven people are expected to be on board, although three of them are understood to be planning to appeal. In the past hour, the UK Foreign Secretary has said anyone who avoids the flight will be put on a later one. Vincent McAvinney reports. Despite the government's publicity around its new policy, yesterday 37 asylum seekers arrived on the Kent coast, but they could face potential removal to Rwanda because they've travelled from France, a safe country. This is the Boeing 767, chartered by the Home Office to take the first group of asylum seekers on a one-way ticket to Rwanda later today. The plane can carry up to 200 on the 4,095-mile journey, but the number of asylum seekers aboard will be in single digits, some of whom are in court in the next few hours, arguing to be removed from the flight. Home Secretary Priti Patel has long argued the policy is in the public interest, designed to deter unnecessary journeys from safe EU countries and thwart the criminal gangs charging for dangerous channel crossings. The policy is, though, dividing public opinion, evidenced by these scenes outside the courts of justice yesterday and the Home Office. Some agree it's an effective way to deal with illegal migration, but for others it's an unsafe and unlawful way to treat vulnerable people who are asking for sanctuary in the UK. The leaders of the Church of England, including the Archbishops of Canterbury and York, have written an open letter decrying it as a, quote, immoral policy that shames Britain. It isn't about Rwanda. We, we'd take exactly the same view uh, if uh, Britain was seeking to outsource its uh, care for refugees, for asylum seekers, to any other third country. This is about people who have the right, a right established since the 1951 Convention, to seek asylum in the UK and to have their asylum uh, case processed and determined here. The policy is also attracting international attention. At the United Nations in Geneva yesterday, it was described as catastrophic. This is all wrong. This is all wrong, this deal, for so many different reasons. But the man who used to be in charge of Britain's borders believes something has to be done to stop the ever-increasing numbers being exploited by traffickers. There's 80 million refugees around the world, according to UNHCR, even more now after Ukraine seeking resettlement in the Western world. And I think there is an upper limit, actually, to the number that any country can take. In the Rwandan capital, Kigali, final preparations are underway at accommodation for those who do board this first flight. The UK government says the arrangement is a model the rest of the world could follow. But with further legal challenges in the coming weeks, there's a chance those relocated here might be given a return ticket to the United Kingdom. Vincent McAvinney, BBC News. The head of the UN Refugee Agency said the policy set a catastrophic precedent. And this is the reaction from Sophie McCann, advocacy officer at Médecins Sans Frontières. It's, it's an abhorrent policy that, that this UK government should not ever have pursued. Um, it essentially um, obfuscates um, the, UK, the British government's um, responsibility to provide sanctuary to people who are seeking safety. Um, I would perhaps challenge the, the, um, uh, the assertion that people are, here illegally. Um, it's actually everybody's um, right to seek asylum and um, those who come from the UK have, have usually, uh, to the UK, sorry, have, have faced persecution, war, and they're looking for um, a, safe, um, a safe place for them and their family to, to rebuild their lives. Um, as, you, as your colleague referenced, the UNHCR has, um, has termed this um, catastrophic and has found this policy to be unlawful. Um, we have, um, um, Médecins Sans Frontières has um, direct experience um, uh, responding to the health, um, the severe and grave health implications of um, policies such as this. Um, Australia, um, uh, the Australian government um, also uh, enforced um, removals uh, and off what's known as offshore processing um, for asylum seekers who were trying to arrive um, by boat um, if, in Australia. If and I they can... Forced if I can just ask, uh, the Home Office lawyers have said that the plan is in the public interest and the High Court has agreed with that. Mm -hmm. Do you accept that justification that it is in the national interest, if not, as you're describing, the global interest? 
I, I certainly don't think it's in the national or in the global interest. The UK should be um, taking asylum seekers um, and providing sanctuary for them here. They should absolutely not be outsourcing and externalizing it um, to another country, wherever that may be, um, and nor should any other um, country, um, especially in the in the global north. Um, but we are we are mainly exactly health uh, implications of this policy. We, we've seen it take place in Nauru, where 60% of our patients um, experienced um, suicidal ideation and self-harm, um, and 30% of our patients that we saw um, had uh, attempted to take their own life. So the, the implications of this policy not only have um, very grey, um, unlawful implications, um, and it obfuscates the UK's international responsibility, um, but it also will have a devastating impact on the individuals who are sent and also their families who are left, whether in the UK or in other parts of the world.